Okay, uh, it's a great pleasure to be with all of you. And my name is Rati from Universitas Gajah Mada. And today's topics uh, is about marine fisheries, conservation, and coastal management. And we have three outstanding uh, and various speakers. Uh, there are Dr. Jumanto, Dr. Ahmad Jasmi, and also uh, Professor Xiong Siju. But I think uh, Dr. Ahmad Jasmi and also Professor Xu will be uh, joined later on. Uh, okay, um, the speaker will have 30 minutes to give presentations and after all the uh, speakers finish their presentation, we have uh, 30 minutes for discussion sessions and uh, maybe without, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can raise your hand and uh, ask uh, directly to the speakers or just uh, write your name in the chat, uh, uh, write your uh, and question in the chat room and I will read it in the uh, discussion sessions. Okay, and for information, the uh, participant is uh, various backgrounds and also from various uh, country. Okay, without any further ado, uh, may I uh, greet Dr. Jumanto? Are you there? Good evening. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, good evening. <laughs> yes, good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Jumanto. Uh, Maybe I will uh, read the curriculum today from Dr. Jumanto. Dr. Jumanto is from the Department of Fisheries, uh, Universitas Gajah Mada. He got a doctoral degree from Ehime University in Japan in 2005. And uh, his research interests in aquatic ecosystem, population dynamics, also stock assessments. And uh, I think Dr. Jumanto also has many publication and work experience. Okay, Dr. Jumanto, I think uh, uh, Dr. Jumanto will talk about uh, this uh, biodiversity. So the opportunity is yours. You have 30 minutes, Dr. Jumanto. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, uh, moderator, Burate, uh, honorable ladies and gentlemen, par all participants. Uh, thanks for coming this evening. Uh, this afternoon uh, business and may I share my presentation okay let's me okay okay uh, am I uh, voice uh, here there yes uh, my here, voice thank there? You. yes okay thank you and uh i pointed to address the presence of biodiversity and so here i will present the uh paper about the biodiversity offices i am Sumanto. it already explained and the because of tight time so i will uh, present a little bit fast uh this is the outline of my uh, presentation this afternoon. First, I would like to talk about the biodiversity, then about physics, so bio, uh, biodiversity of physics then, and about uh, the biodiversity of physics include about the Agnatans, Chondrichthians, Actinopterygian, like this year, and Sarcopterygian. Um, this um, topic, I will take more detail. Uh, later on, then endemic species and the threat to biodiversity and in situ conservation. This is uh, uh, the outlet of my uh, discussion in this evening. And the material mostly I collect from the fish space and from the uh, color academics, also from the, the book of um, <clears throat> Nelson, yeah, the Nelson, the third publication and also the fourth, five, and sixth publication of Nelson. And let's move on the start. The biodiversity. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is uh, meaning very much. Uh, uh, biodiversity is variety of living things that has be different let's, uh, Sorry. Uh, in their molecule, can, species, and ecosystem as a whole. This city also includes variation in nature, shape, color, size, and texture. This also occurs in the feces. 
in the UN uh, Earth Summit 1992, the diversity means uh, the variability among living organisms from all sources, including interalia, terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystem. And the ecological complexities of which they are part of this includes diversity within species, between species of and of the ecosystem. So three of these uh, have diversity. Let's move on to the type of biodiversity. The biological diversity, yeah, biological variety means that biodiversity in uh, per unit area that's influenced by climate. Why climate? Because this climate is the will affect the uh, living thing in the world. It consists of the diversity of ecosystems, uh, species, and genetic. So diversity of genetic like this one, you see. This is uh, the same name species. This is the name species is same, but they have variety. And the species diversity is the number of species among animals like this one. Is the fish in the pool like this one or in the ocean or in the lake. You can see a lot of uh, species. This means that uh, species diversity. Then the diversity of ecosystem means that the number of ecosystem like uh, this uh, ecosystem of mangrove, uh, and then ecosystem of ocean, desert, and others. Uh, and then, what do you mean of the fish? Uh, this fish is, what do you mean of the fish? Uh, what uh, mean by fish? So, some uh, student give uh, so many um, this uh, explanation about fishes. Yeah. Uh, fishes are aquatic vertebrate that having gill, but not destroying his limbs, uh, digitized limbs, such as fingers or tooth. And uh, this is cladogram of uh, Acterocle feces. Yeah. And fish are aquatic organisms that can be used as food, protein sources, industrial raw material, trade commodities, water tourism object, and med uh, medicinal ingredient, and also source of Implement also other things. Again, what about the fish? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, what do, what about fish? Uh, what does mean fish? A simple explanation: fish are organisms that have the following characteristic: vertebrate first. The vertebrate that fish is uh, have. Uh, Backbone as uh, far uh, for the breath, not only backbone, but this is uh, back nerves. Yeah? Then live in water, so this fish has skill to take uh, oxygen in the water, and has fins for moving in the water. Sac have separated between male and female, usually fertilize inside uh, outside the body. Uh, some fish species uh, fertilize inside the body, yeah. and has scales. Has scale also concluded that why the feces uh, uh, stood up to the environment temperature and has also a lateral line to detect the uh, pressure of the water. Has jaws, yeah, also uh, closed system circulation. It means that this is uh, roughly explanation. In uh, has jaws, not all fish. Have uh, some species ha has no chairs, and this, for example. So very simple, it is vertebrate animal that live in water pretrochil. This is very simple explanation. Then what mean by fish again? Uh, fish in narrow sense are member of Canatostomata. Yeah, this is, uh, I saw also the picture here. Um, then fish in broad sense, Sorry. Uh, fish in percent is a part of the Kenatotomata and Aknata. It means that uh, Kenatotomata and Aknata here. Mm, fish are parapilatic descendants that uh, share a common ancestor and include some of its descendant species, such as tadpole. It means that uh, fish is very wide broad. Yeah? Uh, tadpole here includes yes. Fish are very diverse in their habitat. Uh, we can find fish in the desert, in the uh, coastal area, in the deep sea, and under 
any and anything place that are very diverse. Morphologically, morphologically and genetically also diverse. Uh, and you see here, very diverse morphology and also genetic. Then uh, this is the fish in um, broad sand, uh, parapiletic, yeah. This year, uh, parapiletic, why parapiletic? Because uh, amphibian also that pull, yeah, for the other vertebrae, you include here, so it's parapiletic. But uh, fish is in the monopiletic, uh, means that the actinopterygii here, uh, starting from plantistia, actinoptery, and so on here, is the physis meaning in um, very close, um, uh, very close means, a uh, uh, monopiletic group. Yeah. Then, again, physis. Physis is a, a vertebrate that have kill and live in water, as I mentioned before. Fish morbega is very diverse. Then, yeah, as I saw here, uh, based on this similarity of morphological, meristic, behavioral, and DNA, structure character, as well as other character, fish species are grouped to form cladogram like the life uh, hand picture this year. This is fish parapiletic group, yeah, very wide. Uh, diversity. Yeah. Then let's move to the proportion of the fish. How the fish? Uh, how the diverse of the living thing in the uh, in the global? As the biomass total here, I note here uh, biomass global around five hundred forty-six thousand two hundred million ton of carbon, and this. Uh, picture so that the plan yeah, and here uh, almost 82.39 uh, uh, percent. This is the percent. This is the composition total composition of carbon, and the animal only to uh, 0 0.37 percent, only a uh, small portion. Then, if we uh, animal we divided again, the global famous person of from the guitars here. Yeah. The animal here yeah, uh, consists of fish, anelida, molas, cinadarian, livestock, and human, also uh, wild animal, totally around 2,000 million ton of carbon yeah, on, from the 0 0.37. And this person mostly is here, uh, fish, sorry, yeah. Um, this fish around 28.35%. Well, human only 2.43. Yeah, you want to even though, uh, like the human in the world at the moment run uh, roughly a million people. Yeah, so fish is uh, most um, then compared to human. Yeah, okay. then let's move on the um, sorry, any proportion of the uh, it, uh, the uh, uh, vertebrate, yeah. First, but the colpa invertebrate, sorry, Inver, interver, invertebrate around 1,000, uh, 1, 300,000 uh, uh, species. And mostly around 75.6% is insecta. Yeah. Then this is around a uh, vertebrate, yeah, a uh, vertebrate. And mostly uh, fish is contribute around 48.8 percent the total around 27 for uh, 80, 183 species of vertebrate in the world and totally valid fish here I also I note here around 36 point uh, 30,272 uh, valid species this is belong to uh, Nelson uh, in, in around uh, in the Six um, publication, yeah. Six. Um. Then let's move up the variety of the species. And as the mentioned before, the species of fish will a uh, new species will discover a yeah. uh, new species every month. Uh, discover like this year. Uh, I show you the table from the 2003 until 2022, 
totally new species uh, discovered on 7957 species as this way uh, for the nelson said that in his book in the the published in 1987 86 then not around the fish species around 70,997 species and at the moment around 30,000 uh, 36,272 species so the every man new species cover. then mostly is uh, from the fresh water compared here the total is 7,977. Then from four, or almost almost 5,000, almost uh, more than uh, 60% is from, from fresh water as the fresh water uh, has um, very uh, small portion compared to uh, fish uh, compared to the ocean. And this is the new species uh, discovered from a uh, new species described from 1995 until uh, 2022. And this is the last 2022. Uh, this man found uh, around 176. Yeah, so it means that until the end of the year, around maybe around three to four hundred uh, species, new species discovered or uh, described by the researchers. And how many fish species are currently valid? As already mentioned, the total around 36, 272 species, and this from the seven class and order 62, and the family around 515. And this the family maybe will increase, maybe because uh before 2000, the family of fish compressed around 480 and now around 515. And the genera around 4,494. And the comparison, this uh, for the fish species and uh, fish species that uh, stay in freshwater compared to uh, marine species is almost half, almost uh, balance. Then let's move to the uh, fish species. I will dis uh, describe. Uh, a little bit fast, but this for uh, classes Agnata, Condrictias, Actinopterici, and Sarcopterici. Let's move up the Agnata. This Agnata, uh, there are uh, two order Mixiniformus and Petroximoformus, and this is an example of the Mixiniformus, and the ref one is Petroximisoniformus, and how they differ the diversity of the species. Let's hear the, the diversity of the mixed uniformus is around the family only one genera there are six and species uh, 76 while the uh, petrochemiformus this is uh, lamprey yeah uh, this elongate cylindrical uh, and so on the diversity of family is around three the genera around 11 and species around 46 so the family more here, but the species uh, less compared to the Miximoformus. And this is the uh, characteristic of the Agnatas. Then let's move to the Chondrictians, as this Chondrictians comprise of three uh, ordo, Chimaira, Sars, and Res. Yeah. The Chondrictians are particular species. The diversity here, I uh, note that. The, there are around 14 or no, the 45 family, then 170 genera, also 1,200 species. Then, um, detail of this species, uh, Fosimaeus, this characteristic here, uh, I will not read, and I saw you here, the diversity of this family, they have three, fa three family, six genera, and uh, 50 species and this is just one example of course the uh, <clears throat> morphology is very diverse and this uh, chimeras or that fish mostly stay in the bottom of the ocean next um, 
This is the uh, heterodontal formats. <coughs> and stout spine along the leading edge of the bone, after salvin, yeah. analvin is present, usually the present and distinct bro right above his eye and big legs node, small, not completely anterior to the eyes here, and the caudal fin conspicuous uh, terminal uh, loop. The diversity, <laughs> sorry, sorry, the diversity, the family, only one family, genera one and species nine. Then let's move off to the lamniformus, this lamniformus, yeah, and macrel starch. The characteristics, nitic tating, eye lights absent. Then mode behind front here uh, of the eyes, uh, five pair of gill slits here, five in there is a five, sometimes six, but this is only five. Uh, other species is five, yeah. Uh, other species is uh, thick, and this is only five. Put yourself in without spines, yeah. Dorsal, uh, dorsal fin without spine here, uh, and alfin is present here, yeah. analfin is present. Then the diversity of the species, there are seven family, and the genera round 10 and species round 15. Let's move on to the sac in carcaniformis. This is characteristic, uh, nictitating iolite pression, yeah, uh, like ini, and because they, they can move in. Mode behind the front of eyes, mode here, behind, and five uh, pair of killlets, yeah, five killlets, then both dorsal fin without spine, yeah, no, no spine, and nalfin is present, yeah, also nalfin uh, is present, and the diversity family is eight, and genera, they have 50 genera, and species 287. Let's move on the coliformus or top this is the characteristic of his sacs, Scoliformus. The diversity is the family six. There are 24 genera and uh, 130 species. The characteristic is there are two dorsal fins. Two dorsal fins, this one. Which is usually post spine. Yeah, all spine, small. They uh, usually have a smart, uh, sub, yeah, very sub. And no anafin or nictitating membrane, uh, yeah. No analfin, you yeah. usually so add, uh, add the species there's analfin. Five to seven kill slits, five to seven. Uh, so some species have six, seven, and five. Let's move on the John uh, Dictias. So this means that Pato uh, idea or skate and race. Yeah. This race, yeah, skate and race. Mm, there are topediformes uh, and then ordo no patiformes, molipatiformes, and raciformes. Patiformes is mean that skate and rest. The first they, they, this uh, group is there, there, uh, there are 40 order, then have 17 family and 70 genera. Also, they have five, uh, 650 species. Um, this is the characteristic of this uh, group of uh, species. This kids, um, turpidiformus, and this is rachiformus, and the diversity of this species, they have four families, um, and 30 genera, and 360 species, 361 species. Then for the rest here, uh, they have 10 families, uh, 70, 27 genera, and also 220 species. Yeah? Uh, they have long tail yeah, compared to uh, skid or other species. Then this torpidiformus, this I have already explained a little bit. And this is the diversity. They have two families, and there are Seven genera, also 55 species for the turpidiniformis. And for the rachiformis, diversity, there are uh, four family, 30 genera, and uh, 361 species. And the milopiformis, yeah, milopatiformis, is the characteristic very long tail. The diversity is they have family eight. 
the genera 27 and species 220 uh, species. This means that very diverse, even a uh, skid, race, and redfish. They have very much family, very much species, yeah? so very diverse. Then let's move up to the Actinopteri GE. Yeah, Actinopteri GE here. That uh, it means that fin fish, yeah, yeah. Uh, fin is very diverse here, yeah, as we uh, so I I saw here yeah, cladogram from the telos tei Actinopteri GE here, Actinopteri GE. Uh, around 4,500 more uh, species. It should be more here, tell us. Actually, we include a rare fin feces. Yeah. This characteristic is well developed school with 60 bone notochords. Then, homo sersal tail bone is mean that upper and bottom is seen. This is episersal, and uh, this uh, or this one is homo sersal. Upper column covering gel. So it means that they breed more actively compared to, uh, say, for the shark. Yeah. So it means that uh, when we breed, then stop, uh, we uh, close we, uh, our nose, then for a few, a few moments, then the oxygen will also by hemoglobin. So it means that uh, upper column will mix fish uh, breeding more effectively. Uh, diversity. The order is 64, the family 453, genera 4,500 uh, genera and species totally 32,000 uh, belong to um, Nelson uh, publication. This is the uh, actinopriki characteristic and uh, this is characteristic. I uh, will not uh, read this characteristic. Then move, and this the character of uh, actinomer uh, for this primitive one, primitive species, polypter, um, polypteriformes, acipentriformes, lepisotermiformes, amimiformes, and this is the characteristic, and this is the next sample of the feces. And this fish species not found in tropical area, so they found in the high latitudes, such as in United States or uh, the country in Canada, and so on, in the uh, high latitudes uh, area. <clears throat> so, however, <clears throat> this uh, also uh, can found in the um, trade of or, or, ornamental trade, yeah, because uh, this is for the ornamental fish. And there is also uh, news that some this species can found in the river in Yogyakarta. So this, this is very dangerous species because we'll eat all uh, uh, local species, uh, local fish species. Then let's move on the Telostain species. For freshwater, around 13,000, around 40%, it's going to totally marine water around. 18,000, 50 percent. It means that almost half between freshwater and marine water uh, species, almost half. Yeah, even sometimes some books say uh, marine is more. Some some books say almost same. But okay, we talk about this fish almost half between marine uh, habitat also fish that stay in freshwater habitat. That but uh, we we should think that. The global marine habitat uh, almost 99%. So it means that in the freshwater fish species <clears throat> is very dense compared to marine species. This is the telostei characteristic. I don't read this uh, characteristic. Okay. And I just talked to the diversity. The this species on the order 39, the family around 447. And species total 26,840. So some books on the 32 and so on, but it means here I saw that the uh, actinopterichi or ostectase is the most uh, diverse compared to the other group of fish species. I'm sorry, and you... your time is five minutes left. 
thank you. Okay, yes, thank you. And it is uh, <clears throat> so more and siliformus also the diverse diversity, very dense uh, per se day. Okay, let's move here a little bit. Marine uh, diversity of the last species of bay habitat. Marine species, more than 18,000, then salo in the tropical water to 12,000 and so on. And here the most uh, density, uh, the most uh, diverse is species in the salo tropical waters. Then this anthropy, let's move to <clears throat> this. Uh, let's move to the, this. Uh, species, there are two uh, order, and this Celacantiformus, that this uh, before already uh, informed that already extinct, but the later uh, literally found this is um, Latimeria, uh, Colacantiformus, Latimeria found in, uh, uh, in Papua, uh, in Papua, diversity family only one, found only one, genus one, species two. And this is lungfish, not found in tropical area. The diversity, family three, the genera three, and six. Let's move on to the, uh, the most diversity habitat. Uh, mostly, the most uh, <coughs> diversity habitat is in the tropical area. Yeah. Compared to last year, uh, mostly in the three angle uh, area. Compared here, uh, in Philippines, then in uh, Sulawesi, Indonesia here, more than 1,000, yeah, more than 1,000. Compared to Caribbean, only 444, Eastern Tropical Pacific, only 392. The next two endemic species, the endemic species, this is the total endemic in, found in Indonesia, around 4,826. The fresh water, 1,248, 1, and salt water, 3,600. 159 and even though the marine species found more uh, most three times, but the density in freshwater in Indonesia also still very high. Then the endemic number are uh, fishy compared here. Indonesia 1,700, uh, sorry, 172. And then Papua New Guinea around 48, Philippines around 47, and Solomon Island only eight. Yeah? Then it means that Indonesia very uh, density compared to other area. And this is the diversity of fish species in the coral reef. Let's move on to the trade biodiversity. And this is very important biodiversity that uh, most aspect of our life where this is very important. We should keep the diversity. Uh, this is, I don't read, I will not read this uh, explanation. Then, Biodiversity treat. Now, this is uh, biodiversity is considered reservoir resource that can provide food and seen industrial product. I, however, some uh, activities make biodiversity is very, uh, very uh, dangerous. Yeah, very. What's mean that the diversity become lost. And this is the last the biodiversity. Uh, conserv conserving biodiversity. This is an example of uh, our department make uh, keep the diversity uh, healthy, uh, very high, uh, where distributes, uh, distributes uh, some fish species in the river, killing uh, river, and so on. And let's, okay, this is, uh, this is the cons uh, conservation and um the the next example that community can make conservation uh good practice that uh good environment will make um better income for uh local people this is an example how the in Baros district uh, community in the Baros district plant the mangrove then the mangrove give an benefit for Community, yeah, co community, and this is uh, that uh, our department uh, by Pak Eko make uh, Kasipu to discuss uh, everything here. 
And this is the how the conservation uh, in of uh, in in Paros area that give benefits to community to environment uh, surrounded area. And the bottom is the example main protected area can support the uh, fish community by increasing of fish cat uh, get good healthy environment and good uh, fresh fish and healthy fresh fish and good income for community in this uh, marine supported area. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Makasih, merci, arigato gozaimasta, matunwun. Then I return back to the moderator. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Jumato. It's very insightful uh, presentation. I think about this uh, biodiversity in Indonesia. Okay, maybe let me uh, greet first uh, who are already joining. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Yasni from Malaysia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, Professor Siong Tizu. Good afternoon. Hello, Professor Xu. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, am I uh, correctly spell your name? Sorry. Oh, my name is Xu. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe thank also you. we remind the participants, uh, maybe you have any questions, you can uh, uh, raise your hand in the session discussion or just uh, write your question in the chat room. Okay, now uh, we move to the second uh, presenters. Uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Ahmad Shasni from Malaysia. Uh, you read uh, the curriculum today. Dr. Ahmad Shasni bin Kamaruddin uh, from University Sultan Zainal Abidin, Malaysia. And he got PhD from Hiroshima University in Japan in 2014. And his research interest is about aquatic uh, plant and animals, population genetics, uh, also molecular marker and aquatic Product and we got in the property many awards and also so many publications. Uh, and today, uh, Dr. Ahmad Chasni will give a very interesting topic, I think, about application of DNA barcode and environmental uh, DNA in monitoring aquatic infections. Okay, uh, uh, I invite uh, Dr. Ahmad Chasni to start uh, presentations. Um, the opportunity is yours. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon to all uh, participants and uh, keynote speakers uh, today. Uh, especially thank you to uh, Rate Orita, uh, as a <laughs> moderator today. Okay, thank you for inviting uh, me, uh, UGM, especially UGM, lah, uh, for inviting me to this summer school. Okay, uh, I want to close this. Okay, so today I will present a little bit about uh, aquatic invasive species and their monitoring to DNA methods. Uh, including the e and a methods that the moderator said uh, before. Okay, I'm uh, Ahmad Shazni Kamaruddin from Faculty of Bioresources and Food Industry, uh, UNISA. Uh, for those who don't know where is UNISA, okay, uh, we have uh, three campus, but my uh, working area is in Basut, uh, is in the peninsula of Malaysia, but uh, in the east, uh, east coast of Malaysia in the state of Terengganu. So there is uh, the view of uh, our campus uh, is uh, near to the sea. And also uh, we have a lake and others lah, uh, in our campus. OK, so before we go furthermore, uh, I would like to thank uh, my uh, lab members. Uh, this is among our members in my laboratory. Uh, some of them already finished uh, studies. Okay. I, I, I hear uh, another sounds over there. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before we go, we 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 take a uh, one minute break because it's afternoon already, and many of us I think tired and sleepy, a little bit sleepy. So for the one minute breaks, I would like to invite you all to have uh, some exercise, a little, a uh, few exercise actually, to open back your eyes and give back your energy before we learn or might be uh, uh, what we call uh, learn about the boring, maybe boring lecture for someone lah. I don't know lah if they are interesting. Uh, I hope. It is interesting. Okay, so uh, let's uh, we start our exercise by up uh, our head to the up, to the down, left and right. I hope all of you uh, join me to have some uh, exercise. Okay, and then take your arm, right arm, left arm. Okay, uh, and open your eyes. Okay, let's go and let's continue our lecture today. Okay, so our top, uh, my topic presentation is about biodiversity. Maybe uh, Dr. Jumanto already covered the biodiversity a little bit before, but I will continue uh, with some uh, new information. And uh, later on, we know about the invasive species. Uh, the DNA barcoding, uh, environmental DNA, what is eDNA or environmental DNA, the application, uh, our current research on the monitoring the invasive species and the future, what we want to do later on, on the uh, mon how to monitor the invasive species. Okay, everyone, I hope you can follow me. Okay. Uh, so biodiversity. What is biodiversity? As Dr. Jumanto said, uh, biodiversity is uh, diverse. Okay, uh, it contains a lot of flora, a lot of organism, a lot of fauna, and uh, others uh, living things lah, that live in the earth, our earth. Okay, it's a variety and variability of uh, species or organism life in, on earth. Okay, <clears throat> nowadays the biodiversity has become a uh, there are a problem called the species extinction. Many uh, species has been extinct uh, that our next or future generation maybe cannot uh, what we call see or uh, heard about that animal or plant anymore. Okay, now, such as this uh, cat, okay, uh, dinosaur, uh, golden toad, Tasmanian tiger. Uh, passenger pigeon. There are a lot uh, of species already extinct. It's also <clears throat> because of the human activities such as hunting, overfishing, and deforestation. Okay, uh, deforestation is uh, like my head. Okay, uh, my upper head, my hair. Okay, uh, before this, my hair are a little bit uh, what we call many lah. Uh, but now uh, it's gone. Okay because of the dandruff and deforestation of my hair. Same goes to the, our earth, okay? Someday, <coughs> all this uh, flora or fauna or biodiversity species uh, will not be yours, means will not be our next generation anymore. They don't know, okay? Because of the, our uh, hand, okay? And other than the deforestation, overfishing, and hunting, the second serious threat is because of the invasive alien species. What is invasive alien species? Invasive alien species means the in, we introduce uh, species from the other uh, country or region to our uh, country or state, lah. Okay, uh, or we can call it in. Uh, more specific one is aquatic invasion. Okay, there are uh, effect. Okay, uh, the invasive species. Uh, <clears throat> okay, before we go to the effect, we uh, what we call 
learn about uh, a little bit about the invasive species. Invasive species are non-native or non-indigenous species to the ecosystem under consideration. Okay, it is usually aggressive and predatory. Means that they can eat anything uh, in our current uh, our native uh, uh, condition or lake. Okay, so. Sorry, Dr. Ahmad Yasmi, your, your PPT yeah. is there in uh, uh, page number one. It's not moving. It's not moving? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you see? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, invasive species uh, is uh, out, can out compete the native. Uh, it can uh, throw out uh, the native uh, by eating uh, competition or prey competition or maybe some of them eat the eggs of the native uh, species. Okay, uh, some of them also uh, bring the uh, disease transmission. Lah. Okay, so that it will shift the community structures. Uh, they become the Honor or uh, the the power in that area, okay. Uh, so uh, it will cause the species extinction, loss of native biodiversity, the social economic effect, okay. Uh, in Malaysia, there are many species already being invade, invaded our country. It, uh, I maybe share today about uh, our current uh, problem in Malaysia. There are many um, species has been uh, invade our uh, freshwater area. Okay. Can you see the next slide? Yes. Okay. This is an example of invasive species uh, for freshwater and marine sector of the world. Uh, some uh, in the family, maybe Dr. Jumanto already told before, uh, some family as so Kide, okay, Sunny Day, and mostly uh, they are from other countries, okay, uh, like uh, as, as so Cide, uh, is a North America, Europe, Asia, native continent, but they've been introduced into Asia, Europe, and North America, okay. Uh, this is most. Um, on what we call uh, genus that being introduced to the uh, new environment, uh, like uh, Cislidae, lah. usually Cisla uh, ocellaris, Orichromis. Maybe you, you already know the Orichromis niloticus, Orichromis uh, mozambicus, okay, or Orichromis. It's a tilapia, okay, has been introduced from the Africa into our Asia country. Maybe in, I don't know, in Indonesia, maybe also have the uh, tilapia, but in Malaysia, many has been found in the lake and uh, river also, okay? <clears throat> so this is uh, some of the example of freshwater and marine uh, species that has been invaded in Malaysia, like uh, marble crayfish, red claw crayfish, Red claw crayfish is a uh, most popular uh, species from the northern part of Australia and in the Papua New Guinea. Okay, uh, peacock bass. Uh, this uh, species uh, that I will talk uh, in our session today. Okay, is the peacock bass is from the Amazon area, means the Amazon River, Brazil, okay, Peru, been introduced into Malaysia for uh, aquaculture trade and recreation recreation lah for fishing angling mostly for angling okay so uh, in Malaysia we have the is invasive species uh, committee uh, peacock bass uh, red claw and stingray so today we focus on the peacock bass and we a little bit on the red claw okay so this is a peacock bass uh, chisla species there are about 15 uh, most uh, morphology same uh, or what we call the 15 species under the Chichla uh, <coughs> fam family, okay? Locally known as Ikan Raja in Malaysia, it's belong to Chichli Day and widely distributed in Amazon and it's a freshwater habitat. 
uh, not the marine water. Okay, it's highly prolific with two months spawning interval and various predator. Uh, it can eat everything. As you can see in this video, you can see, I hope all of you can see this video where this in a pet shop, uh, they give a fish and the chisla or peacock bus eat uh, one uh, fishes, okay, all, to, all into their mouth, okay. So we introduced the DNA analysis technique to monitor or to manage the invasive species in Malaysia. Lah. So, uh, what we call, we, we do in our lab, lah, study this study, okay. We use the DNA barcoding method and the environmental DNA. What is DNA barcoding? Okay, DNA barcoding uh, is used, being used for identification of uh, Identification using a short section of DNA from a specific gene or genes, lah, uh, control of many genes. Usually, we use the mitochondrial DNA in the COI region, uh, cytochrome oxidase region for the species identification. Okay, it's involved the use of a single gene to identify a given species through the comparison of the nucleotide sequence in the blast. Okay. So we sample what the target, what we want to know, the species, what we want to study. And then we know the target gene. Usually we use the, as I said before, COI region. And we blast, after we get the sequence, we blast in the uh, NCBI, National Center of Biotechnology of Information, or barcode of live database, BOLD. Okay. Uh, these two websites uh, can be used for the species identification or uh, then a barcoding, okay. Uh, this example of the sequence, lah. Okay. Uh, if is the similarity index uh, more than ninety five or ninety nine to ninety nine percent, it said that the species is same species. Okay. So we can identify that species. Okay. So DNA barcoding we can use uh, in monitoring the invasive species for uh, especially in the species identification and in the diet content. In our context, uh, we use uh, DNA barcoding for this tool. Uh, we can determine uh, what the uh, peacock bus eat in the lake, uh, one of the lake in Malaysia we study uh, and we uh, investigate. Uh, the diet that or uh, the prey that being eaten by the peacock bus in their stomach. Okay. Uh, in advance, uh, we can also use the next generation sequencing. Uh, this uh, technique we use for our study in monitoring the red claw crayfish. We know the type of the uh, species that being eaten by the red claw crayfish. Uh, mostly, uh, we found that uh, the red claw crayfish eat uh, uh, mostly on the plant, uh, okay? not uh, the uh, vertebrate or invertebrate, okay? not the animals. Okay? Okay? So through the DNA barcoding, we can know how many species, uh, the history and origin of that species, if we, as we know the species, uh, so that we can know the history and where is the origin, where is the uh, ancestor of that uh, organism. And then we can know what they eat, okay? Uh, so it will focus lah. Okay, uh, so in history and origin, we know the the native habitat, the natural prey that they eat in their uh, country. Okay, and impact on the native species and their reproduction behavior. Uh, in the terms of what they eat, uh, what are they eaten the species that has been mostly uh, extinct in our country or not? We can determine that lah. Uh, okay, and its effect on the biodiversity and loss of the species, okay? So the environmental DNA, we go to environmental DNA, is a collection of DNA from a variety of environmental samples, such as soil, water, snow, and air, 
okay, including the air. So it an example where the where it come uh, the DNA. It come from the skin or scales uh, when the fish moving. Uh, sometimes they uh, their mucus or their uh, waste at, uh, going to the uh, water lah. Okay, or damaged tissue, eggs or larvae, metabolic waste and free DNA that back can be found in the uh, water. Okay, so we know that our target species and we need to develop a, a high species specific primer uh, in order to determine uh, that uh, invasive species has been invaded our uh, fresh water or uh, waterways. Okay, so after that we do the sequencing, either it's present or absent and after that we can take the management action. Okay, we can uh, suggest to the authority uh, what we can do okay, to protect our biodiversity. So I want to, uh, DNA can be used for invasive species detection, invasive species di distribution, and we also can predict the species mass. How many of the uh, alien species or invasive species invade in, uh, let's say, in one pond or let's say in one lake? how many uh, of them are there in the uh, lake. We can predict through the uh, modeling, lah, modeling system, but it uh, take a little bit of time. And uh, species diversity also we can determine through the environmental DNA. So I send a moderator a link. Uh, so later on, maybe you can uh, click the link and to see what is a uh, environmental DNA about but uh, I, I'm sorry it's in Malay language okay so in monitoring the invasive species as I said before okay uh, it can predict the mass and distribution help in taking monitoring surveillance and management decision for biodiversity conservation why we need to use or uh, I choose to use the environmental DNA because it's environmental friendly, it's not disturb the fish, uh, less danger, less labor work, and easy to assess, okay? Compared to the traditional detection method, as we need to catch the fish or we need uh, to have a labor intensive work, time consuming, okay, to be water or low, uh, population density, maybe the, the invasive species invade the area but because of the low density we cannot detect uh, through the traditional method but using the environmental DNA we can detect it through the uh, water only okay so mostly we use the this is a uh, method that we use uh, through the water sampling filtration and then session and then we uh, do the real-time PCR usually we use the caging power water kit for DNA session okay So peacock bus has been uh, invaded uh, Malaysia. Uh, this is our current study. Lah. We found that uh, peacock bus has been invaded more state in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, in example, in Perlis, in Timah Tasodem, uh, in the future, Timah, uh, in the Timah Tasodem, the peacock bus will take over because the native species nowadays has been in decreasing and the number of peacock bus has been increased. Okay. We also study the uh, peacock bus in Terengganu, uh, in Lake Telabak. Uh, in, over there, we uh, study about their diet preference and the uh, origin or type of the fish species uh, belong to which country or belong to which uh, species. Okay. Because uh, nowadays, uh, in the Chichila species, there are, as I said before, 15. Um, <clears throat> five of them uh, has a difficult to differentiate morphologically. So we use the uh, DNA barcoding method to determine through the uh, DNA method. Lah. Okay, same like uh, CSI, if you see the movie, okay, crime scene investigation uh, is same <clears throat> concept. Okay, and then also we know what they eat, as I told before, and how they diverse and how to detect them. Lah. So this is uh, uh, what we, we call the workflow. Okay, 
uh, for the monitoring the peacock bus in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, we also can know the propagu pressure. Uh, propagu pressure is the frequency of how many times they being introduced, let's say in one area. Uh, okay, we know through the genetic uh, uh, calculation. Uh, there's a technique to calculate uh, using a software, and then we can know, uh, we estimate, not know, we can estimate the propagu pressure. Okay, uh, so after that, we uh, develop a species specific primer for the DNA the technique, and <coughs> after that, we can suggest the detection, monitoring, and surveillance. At the end, uh, we can conserve our biodiversity again okay, from the invasive species. Okay, so this is a previous application of DNA barcoding. Uh, it's reported being used to identify dietary items or species that are challenging uh, to study. Okay, owing to their rarity means that they are rare. Uh, or example, as a uh, deep water sharks. Okay, we can use the DNA barcoding method or small body size fishes, uh, lava fish. Okay, uh, species that reach generalist diet means that they eat uh, many diets, lah. Okay, coral reef fish. Okay, it's also can use to determine the taxonomy and origin of many invasive species. Okay, for the application in the Indian A, uh, it's widely used to detect the various invasive species and the distribution. Uh, example on the amphibians. Uh, the last report in Japan. Uh, they detect the American uh, bulldog frog, okay, uh, bullfrog, I think, uh, uh, in one lake, and also the procumbrous marble crayfish, procumbrous clucky in the same lake, okay. Uh, aquatic plants also we can detect to the environmental DNA, fishes, uh, invertebrates, and uh, also being reported use uh, DNA being used to detect the uh, what we call tiger. Okay, uh, through their uh, P. Okay, so this is our recent uh, study uh, found that the population of peacock bus in Lake Kelaba, a mammal lake in Besut, has uh, one species, which is the Chisla uh, oscillaris. Okay, uh, a total of 40 fish were sampled from Lake Kelaba for the analysis, and only one single haplotype has been detected among all species, which is 99% equals to the Chisla oscillaris. Okay, it's come from the uh, Peru, uh, Brazil region, Amazon region lah, uh, confirmed to that. Okay, uh, we, other than that, uh, we also study the prey, as I said before. Uh, we found uh, many uh, digested uh, eaten uh, animals or organism in the stomach, but we cannot determine uh, through the morphologically, so that we use the then barcoding method to determine what type of uh, fishes or prawn they eat. Okay, the invasive uh, peacock bus eat in that lake. So we found uh, about six. Okay, uh, six other species. So uh, we also develop a species specific primer sets for detection of the crayfish. And uh, <coughs> one of our lab members. Uh, now can detect uh, the appearance of the crayfish in the waterways in uh, in Malaysia through the collecting uh, the water only. Okay. Uh, I have one video. I think I, I'm not sure it can be done or not. This is our my our product. Okay. Uh, we make a. Uh, Maybe I can play a little bit. Uh, I cannot. Okay. CQ, we call it as a CQ eDNA S box. Why CQ is the uh, eDNA S box? CQ uh, means the correct coordinate. eDNA is environmental DNA, and S box is for sampling box. In this box, um, we put uh, some. Uh, what we call the manual, how to use uh, the shrink uh, to collect the water samples. Uh, so it's easy for the uh, people of scientific uh, villages, um, uh, scientists to collect the water samples and 
do the sampling or to determine the appearance of CQ in that area. Okay, maybe I can, if no time, I can skip this. Okay, uh, CQ. I will later on we give uh, this video to the members. Okay. Okay. So future our future research is uh, combining the eDNA method and GIS. GIS means the geography information system to detect uh, the distribution of the invasive uh, species uh, in our country. Lah. Okay. GIS can be used to determine the possible IS location that fit the habitat specific parameters. So at first, uh, how they work uh, at first we determine the uh, habitat or uh, habitat specific parameters means the temperature the ph so is, is that location is suitable for the invasive species or ias uh, to uh, to live uh, to living in that area okay uh, so through the GIS, it's a novel tool uh, to detect IS in Malaysia that will benefit researchers and policy makers in monitoring the effect of IS in the future. Okay, integration of eDNA and GIS can be proposed as part of the fisheries management method in the future. So we are looking for the opportunity to do this experiment lah. Uh, this uh, they been reported from the uh one of journal from japan okay they use the gis technology combining with the uh, eDNA to detect uh, one of the uh, potential is habitat lah, uh, in japan okay it's proven to be a practical approach to study the complex geographic terrain types and diverse in accessibility ecosystem okay so this uh reference that being used in this uh, uh, what we call slide and lastly don't forget to add my laboratory ig to your friend list okay this is my our team members uh, ig okay dras lab okay dras uh, underscore lab so that's all from me for today uh, thanks for listening uh, thank you i give back to the moderator Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmad Chasni, uh, for the great presentation about eDNA and the applications. Okay, uh, I think now uh, we turn to the final presentations by uh, Professor Xiong Zizu. Okay, uh, let me inform the students here first. Professor Xiong Zizu. Okay, Hello. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Can you uh, hear me? read your CV first, Prof? Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to uh, share. Yes. Professor Xiong Zizu uh, is the oh, okay. an Institute for Sustainable Ocean in Xiamen University. He got doctoral degree in marine ecology from uh, Xiamen University. Also finished postdoc from St. Mary's University and post Alfred University in Canada. And uh, his research interests about sustainable coastal development for more than 20 years. Uh, so it is no doubt that Professor Xu is very experienced in his expertise. So now uh, I give uh, full opportunities to Professor Xu. Time is your Professor. Your time is just yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me to a uh, presentation here to share the uh, uh, knowledge about uh, uh, integrated coastal management. So uh, I, I know we will have uh, half an hour for this uh, presentation, and I try to uh, use my, uh, to do my best to uh, explain. Okay, so uh, where is the coastal zone? I would like to use this map to uh, let people understand the uh, coastal zone definition. So coastal uh, part of the land and the uh, 
near short waters and the offshore waters offset the all of the continental shelves. So uh, if we could, we try to, to understand more about the coastal zone, we could see this, uh, the coastal zone include the inland area where the watershed which affect the coast, mainly by pollution. And include the coastal lands like the wetlands, marshes, and where human activity is concentrated and directly affects the attraction waters. And include the coastal waters like the estuary, lagoons, and the shallow waters, where the effects of the land-based activities are dominant. And then the offshore waters, like the shale edge, EEG. So like, that is the uh, coastal zone for more details to understand uh, what is the coastal zone. And because the coastal zone, it is the interface between the land and the sea, but consent and interest are concentrated on the area in which the human activities are interlined with both the land and the marine environment. Like the picture show you here, the Territorial environment, marine environment, this both is the interface between the land and sea. But we're thinking about the related to the human activities. So if thinking human activities, so just only this part, I think is when we're thinking about the uh, Coast zone management, we need to think in this part. So it includes the coastal oceans as well as the portion of the land adjacent to the coastal. That influence the coastal waters is the, uh, what is the coast zone uh, mentioned. So for thinking this, the definition of the coast zone should encompass the following areas. One is connected to the shoreline. Second is the form and internal part of the coastal landscape. And the third is the transitional area between coastal waters and the territorial systems. And the last one is the utilize for human activities. Okay, so, so that is uh, about uh, what is the coastal zone I would like to uh, uh, introduce. And regarding the integrated coastal management, the concept I would like to share with you today is that the ICM for short, uh, integrated coastal management, ICM for short, is a natural resource and environmental management systems that employs an integrated policies approach and an in interactive planning process in addressing complex management issues in coastal areas. And it is a continuous dynamic process. And very important, I think, is the ICM implementations goals, ICM aims to address major sustainable development trends by protect, protecting the functional integrity of the, this natural resource system while allowing economic development to process. So that means ICM implementation is for the sustainable coastal development. And these two pictures show you the idea, the idea sustainable coastal development is like this picture you show. And the, right now, the current situations 
sustainable development in coastal area is like this. So we need to let three part societies, economies, and environment could integrate it to like the, this picture show you based on the good environment and the health societies development and the economy could support the economic development. That, that is about the uh, uh, ICN and uh, sustainable development, the relationship between these two. So people will ask why we need the ICN. And I think because now we uh, encounter more and more the uh, marine issues that is could not use the traditional uh, settler way to manage because uh, the settler, settler way already have uh, showed the some governance failure. Like in China, we have uh, so many agencies for the, like the mining agencies, tourism management agencies for industry or commerce, and maritime administration, fisheries management agency, like that. And such kind of the agencies, actually, they could uh, work in this, the same area in coastal area. And so that lead to the some conflict, especially the resource use uh, conflict management, building the management. So that is why we think the now, if we, you we don't use the integrated cost management way, I think the governance failure will lead to uh, some uh, some problems that is difficult to deal with when you use the traditional circular way. Another is because of the market failure. Some resource, especially the, uh, the key coastal habitat, if you want to protect such kind of the coastal habitat, like a bungalow, coral seagrass, beach, lagoon, estuary, and so on, I think it is uh, very difficult to use the market way. So some, the region come from the egalitarianists, come from the carbon properties, and come from the extreme barriers. It is, those is difficult to uh, use the marketing way to manage the such kind of the, uh, resource use or protect. So that is why now we need the ICM more and more, uh, the coastal management need the use uh, integration way. And then let's see what is the ICM. ICM is a coastal management system to regulate the human behaviors and preserve the functional integrity of the terrestrial and the marine ecosystem for achieving sustainable development of the coastal area. So important, ICN is a management system and to use, regulate the human behaviors. And the goal is achieving sustainable development in the coastal areas. So that is the uh, definition of the ICN. And someone 
redefining the ICM. The, with what? He uh, more detail to sell out for achieving sustainable development of the coastal and the marine areas within a defined geographical and administrative boundaries. So actually this is concrete from the ICM practice in East Asia seas. Okay, so like if we want to uh, more understand the ICM uh, definitions, maybe this could be help for the people to more understand this. So uh, integrated coastal management, we could understand more from these three uh, words. Integrated, what kind of integrated? Not all of the things integrated together, but policy and the functional integrations. So the such kind of the policy and functional integration include the intersectional integrations, include the intergovernmental integrations, include the spatial integrations, include the size management integration, and include the international integrations. So that, that is the uh, integration being in this in the ICM. And the coaster, here, coaster means the land sea interface. We need to, to understand this, that coastal area, we thinking the land sea interface. And the management, for what? Regulate human activities towards achieving economic and environmental sustainability and equity. I think we could through these three uh, words, we could understand concept of the ICM. And the ICM system is made up of framework, mechanism, and process. The framework Thinking about the policy and the management framework. From this picture, we could understand the policy decision making and management frameworks could more understand from these uh, pictures. So that, that means what? That means the policy making framework and the management framework work together and to support the ICM framework. And the mechanism means the coordinating, implementing consensus building need a mechanism to support. Like in Xiamen, China, we have a such kind of the coordinate mechanism for the ICM, okay? So let, we will help you to understand what means the coordinate uh, mechanism. So this is the organi organization structure for integrated coastal management in Xiamen, China. So ICM need a very uh, useful mechanisms, or we said the operational uh, mechanisms. And the ICM process include the planning, partnership building, and monitoring. This process, I think, is very important to let people understand what is the ICM could be used for the uh, sustainable coastal development. 
And I try to let you more understand about the ICM characteristic features. ICM it adopts an integrated holistic natural resource and environmental planning and management framework to balance competing and concreting use in coastal area. It uses interactive multidisciplinary process-oriented program development and implementation approach. It follows an incremental by strategy program implementation process. And it ensures stakeholders ownership and uh, particip particip uh, participation. It improves coastal governance. It protects the functional integrity of the ecosystems and it re regulates human activities to ensure economic and environmental sustainability. That is the characteristic features of the, the ICM. So people could, through the ICM implementation, got the, some uh, benefits. One is like the restructure the existing single sector oriented management systems reduce the cost of the multiple use coverage, and last increase benefits of various coastal investments to the society as a whole. An ICM can be considered the most modern management process for the harmonization of the interests of industrial development and conservation of the natural resource in coastal areas. The ICM can be defined as a decision-making and management process with which to achieve the sustainable use, development, and protection of the coastal and marine areas as well as of their resources. And then ICM stands for an environment economic regulatory system for numerous competing interests. So that, that is the sum of the benefits of the ICM. <clears throat> Up to now, we could uh, conclude from the uh, some projects of the ICM. And how could how can uh, use the ICM in some, uh, in the uh, ICM size. So this picture, that is uh, come from the uh, Dr. Cha Jia Ying. Uh, I think maybe someone uh, know him. His articles conclude the, this kind of the ICM so-called from the practice of the ICM in uh, East Asia seas. So more details, we could use the, this to, uh, to show you. You know, the <coughs> picture showed that the ICM project could be have uh, different states. State one, preparing, state two, initiating, Stage three, developing, three, four, adopting, three, five, <coughs> step five, implement, implementing, and stage six, refining and consolidating. So, and after the stage six, the, uh, stage six, the new circle will be stars. So that means what? That means the ICM project is one kind of endless circle. <clears throat> All right. And, but actually different ICN sites, they have a different uh, operation way and uh, uh, different <clears throat> lessons and experience. So the, the, the best uh, comment I think is the learning by doing, I think is the, uh, best comment for the ICM practice. So the stage one, 
uh, preparation, the basic step include establish a project management mechanism, prepare a work plan and arrange the needed resource, train project staff and stakeholders on the program, set up a project monitoring and evaluation systems, assess requirement for state of the coastal report, assess requirement and interest for the application of the ICM port. The last two sentences is concludes from the Pensy uh, project. I don't know you know Pensy or not. It is uh, uh, it's a uh, organization that we call it the partnership of the, uh, the environmental uh, management for the in the S uh, the sea of the Asia seas. So that that is uh they conclude from the practice in East Asia seas and have a such kind of the stage. But I think the uh, stage one in the preparation step, I think very important is that people do some to understand the size, the coastal size is suitable or not to implement the ICM. So that, that is the state ones I think uh, need to do. And the state two is initiations. It could be used for identify and priorities the environmental issues and connect concerns that the require management interventions. So include some uh, components, develop a communication plan, set up an integrated information management system, prepare a state of the coastal report conduct and initiate environmental risk assessment, prepare a coastal strategy. That is the stage, in, uh, stage two initiations need to do. And the stage three is development. Development what? Development a coastal strategy implementation plan. Develop a multi-stakeholder and integration environmental monitoring and want to develop these tools, I think quite important is we need to do something like to conduct a refined risk assessment, set up appropriate policies and institutional arrangements, develop a coastal use zoning scheme and its implementing arrangements, establish a sustainable financing mechanism continue stakeholders consultation and mobilizations. Okay, so that, that is the uh, stage three uh, need to do. And then stage four is adoptions. That is quite important. Adoption of a coastal strategy and implementation plan, institutional and legal arrangements, and financing mechanisms by the local government authorities is a crucial exercise at this stage. So the local government process include consultation, approval, approval, adoption process. Some key elements in state four include the confirmed support from the collaborators facilitate the process of securing final government approval of the coastal strategies and implementing arrangement. Involve of the public in the adoption process. Chairmanship of the uh, project control committee by the present governor or mayor facilitate the consultation and approval process. Adoption by the local government guarantees, like allocating of the budget, harmonization of efforts 
institutional, institutionalization of the coordinating arrangements, integration of the plans into the development planning framework of the local government. And as stage four, stage five implementation state, it involves the implementation of the coastal Hello. Hello, Professor Xu. Hello, maybe uh, connection is not stable. We will wait. Okay, still processing. Hello, Professor Hugh. Hello, yes. Now, can you hear me? Yes, nearly. Okay, okay. Sorry, your time is uh, two minutes left. Oh, okay, I, I will uh, quickly to stop soon. So uh, stage, we already uh, mentioned about uh, stage five and the stage six is the uh, refinement and the consolidations. The, in this stage, we need to assess ICM program achievement outcomes and impact related to the goals, objectives and targets. And update the uh, integrated information, uh, information management system database and the state of the coastal report and review and refine the some uh, if, uh, like the coastal strategies, operational mechanisms and refine program goals, approach and activities and develop the plan for the next program circle. So ICM circle time frames, uh, three to five years, but various depending on the geographic scope, uh, severity of the environmental issues, complexity of the management issues and institutional and financial capacity of the local government. So we need to uh, prefer the co-insisting with the planning circle of the local government. Need to have a given ICM size, may also need the served circles of the ICM program in order to realize its ultimate the goal or the visions. And the new ICM circle should address the challenge of the scaling up ICM program in the following context. One is geography expansions and or replication of the ICM. Two is functional expansions of the ICM. And third is temporal considerations. That, that is all uh, today I need to uh, I try to uh, presentation and to say with you about the knowledge of the ICM. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Xu, for the exciting presentation about integra uh, integrated coastal management. And now we turn to the discussion sessions. Uh, I see in the uh, chat room is many uh, questions, or maybe uh, anyone who will to uh, ask the question directly, maybe. Please raise your hand. If no, uh, okay. Uh, Hamsi Ahmad from Australia, please. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity given to me. 
I would like to address my question to uh, Dr. Ahmad Zassan first. I have limitation uh, knowledge about the e empowerment DNA. So I want to ask, what is the most limitation of using this method? Because as I know, we have to construct a specific primers for uh, different fish in the water because we just take the water and we want to uh, like to know the, the DNA of the fish and for the traditional method we just uh, use very tiny uh, fish body part so it is not like we have to take samples or uh, some samples of the fish maybe only one fish so could you explain about that? And for uh, Prof. Jumanto, I want to uh, emphasize my attention more to the tropical eels because we have a lot in Indonesia. As I know, we have maybe seven or uh, nine species and it is very uh, diverse rather than other Eels uh, species uh, in the parts of the world, like such as in uh, Japan, in Europe. So, could you maybe like uh, give an opinion about why we 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 are not uh, culture these species, or maybe you didn't mention in your presentation about the this biodiversity. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Bukam from Australia. Okay, please, uh, Dr. Ahmad Shasmi first, and then uh, Dr. Cimanto. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Hamza Ahmad from Australia. You asked about the limitation, first about the limitation of eDNA. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Uh, the, there are several limitations. The first one is we need the species specific primer. Is uh, for our research, it take a little bit longer time in uh, developing the species specific primer. That is the first problem we uh, uh, our constraint lah during our experiment. And uh, the second limitation of eDNA, I think, is expensive okay uh, because we uh, we need um, uh, what we call the then it work lah, as you know the like a tap polymerase like a sequencing it's uh, cost uh, what we call higher cost compared to the traditional method okay and the others is the uh, as uh, not not experience is uh, uh, informative uh, or knowledgeable person to do the experiment. We need a knowledgeable person lah. Uh, is uh, mm -hmm. I think not uh, they can learn, but it's a difficult thing uh, to for the uh, new uh, people to. Uh, do this, uh, especially for the Eden method. Lah. And about the sampling, uh, as I mean, it's quiet, uh, noisy. <laughs> okay. okay, for the sampling compared to the traditional method, uh, you said that we need only need the fin or something like that for the DNA barcoding, but you need to remember that some uh, during the sampling, you maybe cannot catch the fish. But in comparing to the eDNA, you, not, you don't even need to get the fish, only the water to determine whether they are uh, inhabit in that area or not. Uh, so that's a uh, I think the biggest difference lah between the uh, eDNA and the traditional method is that answering your 
question. I hope so. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Hello, we will turn uh, Dr. Jumanta to answer. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Kamsia. Um, that's, uh, I didn't saw the diversity of Anguilla. Yes, because the short time, <clears throat> actually. Uh, actually, in the world, there are around 21 Anguilla species. Yeah. Um, and in Indonesia, there are around uh, nine species, and in Java, around five species. That, uh, but on the three species that are landing in Java, uh, mostly uh, the class eel cap, uh, captured by fishermen in southern of Java, not three species. Even on the season in during December, usually uh, marmorata, and uh, during in the east season or in uh, in October in uh, other species. So why uh, the question is why the species still culture uh, and cannot be breeding because for uh, spawning the species need the special condition because the species uh, belong to Professor Sukamoto. That's my sensei, uh, uh, Sukamoto sensei. Uh, Anguilla spawn in the Deeps, uh, uh, in the deeps ocean, and uh, such as in the for the anguilla celebensis, the they spawn on the deep around three hundred meter, while other species uh, spawn in the ocean floor. So this is uh, the characteristic for spawning the species. And until now, anguilla still cannot be uh, spawned. So that's why this, uh, for culture, this species still uh, collecting from the uh, nature. I mean, that's from the um, river mouth that they uh, migrate to the river. So, <clears throat> so uh, this um, actually very interesting species for Anguilla, where they um, distribute more, uh, mostly in in the uh, Asian countries, that is Indonesia, uh, compare almost uh, 40% for the Anguilla species found in Indonesia. Totally is tw uh, 21, yeah. Then in Australia, different species compared to Indonesia, and this is very interesting. Then this is the reason why I didn't put uh, Anguilla uh, distribution uh, diversity because it's a uh, certain time and as i mentioned around 36000 more yeah? more than 36000 uh, species found in the uh, at the moment thank you okay thank you uh, dr for Jumato. the detailed uh, information prof yes thank you bukam uh, because time is limit now we uh, move to the uh, chat room uh, there are some questions for uh, Dr. Jumanto, Dr. Ahmad Chachni also from, uh, for, to, for Professor Shu. Maybe first, uh, uh, we give opportunity to uh, Dr. Jumanto to answer the question in the room chat. There are two questions about, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, from Muhammad Attar and also from Dr. Indriani. So please, Dr. Jumanto to answer. Yes, thank you for the first question from Muhammad Atta. Yeah? Uh, that from 300 new species that found in 2003, uh, yes, the, uh, every month there are uh, maybe some fish species uh, disappear. I mean, that's um, what's mean that synonym. So if the two species have synonym, so this is only one species uh, valid, the other is synonym. So some species may be uh, reduced, uh, disappear, and new species coming after description. So that's uh, in the 2003 is new species, <laughs> not only in Indonesia, that is I found uh, in the likes uh, in fish space and under um, publication. Yeah, so this is found in the world. And as uh, mentioned uh, by uh, some research, that 
more than 32,000 uh, feasible will be found in the world, but at the moment until uh, 36,000. Yeah. Then the second question coming from, sorry, Indrian uh, Rizka. Mohammed yeah, Kepri. Yeah. Uh, over the years, research has been found that climate change has decreased coral reef habitat. They also affected the number of fish, uh, reef fish, yeah, especially for marine conservation park. Work action can provide to restore environment. Yeah, this is uh, decreasing habitat to to directly from atropinic and the address from climate change, like uh, global warming and there's global warming can uh, increase um, uh, raining and so that can decrease uh, salinity that it will affect to the um, mangrove uh, or the uh, can increase the uh, coral reef, sorry, coral reef um, negation. Uh. Then how to be action? That's uh, in some my research from my uh, college that I have already published in that last presentation. Um, some action can be done by uh, Direct or indirect, right? Direct is mean that can be recovered by planting or by by rocks program and others. Uh, and the other is can be uh, improve, uh, can uh, cause to the community to improve the environment, like uh, to ban the throwing of garbage to the ocean or uh, to protect the coral reef uh, decreasing and uh, at the action. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jumanto, for the answers. You know, uh, uh, the opportunity comes to Dr. Ahmad Shazmi. There are some questions in the chat room. So please uh, give the answer, please. OK, thank you. So the first one, I think, from Ms. Nang. Cherry, how many invasive species in Indonesia? Uh, it's difficult to answer this question because I don't know there's a number of uh, invasive species currently reported in Indonesia. But I know that there are some researchers doing the study about the invasive species in Indonesia. Uh, one of them, uh, I forget his name, uh, but he's doing the research on the red claw crayfish, uh, one of the invasive species. Okay. And this question is for Dr. Jumanto, I think, from Indian Riska. Uh, next. Mm -hmm. Dr. I've just uh, Indonesian uh, from uh, Muhammad Atta. Uh, they asked about the night tilapia uh, catfish, also the not local, not native species. Uh, it's originally from the Africa. Okay. Uh, they are being cultured, same like Malaysia. Uh, they also culture the African catfish, nine tilapia, and red tilapia. Okay, uh, this species has been already well known lah, in our country, and they are not too uh, what, it, um, what we call it. Uh, 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 what we call lah, uh, in in English, I, I forget. Okay, uh, this become a hard. Uh, what we uh, what, but now most all of freshwater farm culture this species. My question, apart from the economic factor, do those trends would be an invasive uh, case in the future? I think, uh, night tilapia, African catfish will not become a threat lah uh, for the our native species, uh, because our native species. Uh, can um what, what we call living together with the uh night tilapia or african catfish otherwise uh this species uh has been reported uh they are not too uh success in as a invasive uh, species compared to mm -hmm. other uh species like uh, uh red tail catfish Okay, uh, or peacock bus or another lah, other species. Okay. 
the next question from Kevin from Malaysia. Uh, what is the next step of management strategies? Uh, the next step for me, for me, myself, uh, is uh, can be as a eradication process. Lah. Mm. Uh, one of the uh, strategies that we can do is by uh, using or uh, maximize the Okay, use of the of the species. Uh, example, uh, the red claw crayfish. Uh, we can use uh, their uh, crustacean. Uh, what we call claw or uh, their uh, uh, kulit apa? Eh? <laughs> uh, their bodies lah. Uh, okay, for maybe for the chitin or chitosan. Okay, so that uh, we can eradicate uh, the species okay the next is i think i already answer for the non cherry they they he asked about the effect effect the freshwater fish population for local fisheries and economic okay uh, currently there are a few invasive species become a problem example is a uh, pickle bass that i mentioned before also the pleco uh, as you know, the pleco is the fish uh, that living in the aquarium usually that eat the algae. Uh, in Malaysia, there are many uh, pleco has been found or recorded in the mostly in the West Malaysia. Okay, invaded uh, our area and mostly they are uh, the fishermen catch and just put it in the land. Uh, okay, uh, so I propose uh, to use uh, them uh, as a food also, and then for the uh, fish meal, okay, we can use it as a fish meal. Other than that, um, red tail catfish also become a problem because of the fish uh, size, it affects the uh, fish landing. Uh, especially for the freshwater fish landing in the area they invaded because uh, the size of the red tail catfish is big and they can mostly eat everything and uh, it decreases the number of the native species so it affects the number of the uh, native species landing in the area yeah, Dr. Ahmad yeah. Yasmin, I think thank it's you. Uh, all the uh, answer by you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Okay, there is a uh, final uh, answer. There are two uh, there are two question for Professor Xu. Professor Xu, please uh, to answer the question. Okay, so uh, which which question yes. is question for the first uh, from Nahla? No, first. Yeah, yes. Okay. How, is how to? Yes. How to conduct an effective monitoring and evaluation of ICM implementation? Uh, I think the uh, most important is uh, you need to have a, a monitoring system, especially the integrated monitoring system. Uh, you know, uh, generally, the monitoring uh, maybe is come from different uh, systems like uh, we have uh, environmental quality monitoring, we have a uh, fisheries uh, resource fisheries uh, resource monitoring and and some on. So I think if you do have uh, integrated, uh, if you do not have uh, integrated monitoring system, that means some. Uh, monitoring results could not to integrate it together and it will be lead to the some uh, different results and let the decision makers it's very difficult to decision how to uh, deal with and how to manage so i think the very important i think is you need to have a such kind of like integrated monitoring system and and uh, about the evaluation of the ICM, 
quite important. You need to have a very uh, clear and uh, uh, concrete the objectives of the ICM. So that means when you do the uh, coastal strategies or to make the coastal strategies implementing planning, you need to have uh, such kind of uh, objectives and let the people uh, understand what is the, the ICN uh, objectives. So that, that is uh, about the first question I would like to, to answer a lot. Hopefully you understand. And the second is about the color of the uh, Miyama want to conjure the some coastal beach. So how to be ready of the ICM? Uh, I think if you have a, a quite concrete uh, objective, like uh, here, we want to protect, conserve the coastal beach, it would be uh, easier to uh, use the ICM way to manage the such kind of beach because we could understand the beach uh, uh, look into the some mm. uh, look for some what kind of the management results, right? So if we could understand this and then we could uh, this to this the such kind of the coral beach uh, conservation as a priorities management issues. And then we could try to use the, some technical or the management way to uh, reach the such kind of the uh, objective of ICM. So that, that is, I think you could, uh, if you, you would like to understand how to evaluate of the ICM in such kind of uh, concrete objectives, I think I could suggest you to use this way. And about the uh, uh, coastal management is a good step, but in the process of the course of several aspects. Yeah. Sorry, maybe you can uh, answer briefly because uh, time is up, Professor. Sorry. Okay. All right. So uh, for this, these questions, I think uh, more important is. Uh, during the, the step, step two, the uh, initiation steps, you need to have a very, uh, very, how to say it? Uh, you, you could do a very, very good the, uh, risk assessment. Okay, such kind of the risk assessment, not just only for the environment risk, but also for the management risk. Okay, so if you have a such kind of a risk assessment successfully, and then you can understand which step uh, maybe uh, encountered some uh, difficult or some issues, and how to use the uh, management way to deal with that. So that, that would be uh, uh, my answers for this. And okay. it seems to have another question or no? Uh, sorry, maybe uh, the first time is uh, up. Maybe we have to uh, end this. Uh, Indonesia, about the about the Indonesia questions, right? Managing. Okay. So uh, I think for this, uh, for for Eddie, right? Uh, Eddie's questions. I think for these questions, my answer is the. Uh, Capacity building is very important for uh, uh, this kind of question. Another, I think, is the decision maker's willingness. If the decision maker have a uh, uh, willing to do the, the uh, ICM, to use the ICM to deal with the uh, some issues in coastal area, I think that is could could be used to. So the uh, stakeholders consensus building, I think is very important for uh, such kind of uh, issues uh, uh, corporates. 
Thank you. That is my answer in short. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Shu. I'm afraid time is so tightly, and uh, uh, I'm sorry that we have to end this this presentation. So once again, thank you very much for the speakers. Uh, with very wonderful uh, participants for keeping the spirit until the end of this session. And uh, maybe before uh, we we end this session, we give big applause for the speakers. Thank you very much. And before uh, we end, maybe. Thank you. Uh, Kamati can uh, take a picture together, please. Okay. Please turn on the camera, please. Patur, can you hear me? You can... uh, yes, no, I can okay. hear you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to capture this screen for the documentation. Please open your camera. So there is three page. I will capture from first page. In three, two, one. Finish. Okay, uh, for second page, be ready. Three, two, one. Okay, for the last page, be ready. Three, two, one. Okay, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Hafid for taking a picture. And once again, uh, uh, I acknowledge uh, Professor Xu, also uh, Dr. Ahmad Jasni, also uh, Dr. Chimanto for giving a very exciting uh, presentation. Also uh, for the all the participants, hope you, you can meet in Indonesia and get in a good chance. Uh, okay, now uh, we will have a brief session, even just maybe uh, 12 minutes, and then we will uh, start with instructor uh, in uh, uh, 16 or uh, 15. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Professor. Thank Sweden. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. James. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Echo. <laughs> yeah, long time not see. Yeah, hope we could <laughs> keep a season. <laughs> okay. Okay, see you. Hope in Siamen. Okay, see you. <laughs> hope. <laughs> hope soon. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for your presentation. Good presentation. Thank you, thank you. I hope uh, could help uh, your students <laughs> to understand. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye now. See. You.
Hello, Hello everyone. Everyone. Yes. We um, can start now. My... Yes, yeah, sure. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are going to start the discussion sessions. Uh, first of all, I would like to reintroduce myself again. My name is Riza Stiawan, and together with Dr. Eko Budi and Farhana Laili or Anna, we will conduct a discussion discussions based on the video that we will play soon. So um, I hope this session will be fun because we just we will we will just watching the video and then we will briefly discuss about that and we will ask your opinion about that. So is it okay? Uh, for you guys, I hope so. Yeah, um, and maybe we can start the video uh, by Ko. Yeah, the committee will play for us. Okay, please, the committee uh, play the video.
sungai merupakan salah satu habitat bagi ikan. Berbagai jenis ikan bisa hidup dan berkembang di sepanjang aliran sungai. Wilayah Yogyakarta memiliki banyak sungai yang dapat digunakan sebagai habitat ikan, seperti Sungai Progo, Sungai Opak, Sungai Tepus, Kali Jode, dan berbagai tempat lainnya. Namun, seiring berjalannya waktu, karena aktivitas manusia yang bermacam-macam, seperti kegiatan mandi dan mencuci baju, penggunaan pupuk yang berlebihan dan tidak ramah lingkungan, sampai membuang sampah di sungai, dapat menyebabkan sungai di Jogja menjadi tercemar. Menurut Undang-Undang Nomor 32 Tahun 2009 tentang Perlindungan dan Pengelolaan Lingkungan Hidup, Pencemaran lingkungan adalah masuk atau dimasukkannya makhluk hidup, zat, energi, dan atau komponen lain ke dalam lingkungan hidup oleh kegiatan manusia sehingga melampaui baku mutu lingkungan hidup yang telah ditetapkan. Salah satu jenis pencemaran yaitu pencemaran air. Pencemaran air merupakan suatu penurunan kualitas air di suatu tempat seperti sungai, danau, laut, dan air tanah. Sumber utama penyebab pencemaran air berasal dari limbah industri dan rumah tangga. Melimpahnya kandungan limbah pada air yang dapat meningkatkan kesuburan air bisa terjadi karena penggunaan pupuk pada pertanian yang berlebihan maupun penggunaan pakan pada budidaya perikanan yang berlebihan. Pencemaran air yang disebabkan oleh munculnya nutrien yang berlebihan ke dalam ekosistem air disebut sebagai eutrofikasi. Eutrofikasi pada lingkungan perairan dapat menurunkan kandungan oksigen berlarut dalam air sehingga mengganggu kehidupan biota di dalamnya serta rantai makanan yang terjadi. Beberapa cara menangani perairan yang mengalami eutrofikasi antara lain penggunaan pupuk organik, tidak membuang limbah ke sungai, serta perencanaan analisis dampak lingkungan yang matang. Eutrofikasi juga menjadi penyebab terganggunya keseimbangan biota perairan. Contoh masalah yang timbul akibat pencemaran air adalah menurunnya stok ikan di sungai. Program Studi Manajemen Sumber Daya Akuatik Universitas Gajah Mada turut berperan dalam mengatasi masalah eutrofikasi perairan sungai dengan melakukan restocking tawes, nila, wader, dan sidat. Restocking bertujuan untuk meningkatkan stok populasi ikan di perairan umum, melestarikan keanekaragaman sumber daya ikan di perairan umum, dan meningkatkan produksi ikan di perairan umum guna pemenuhan gizi bagi masyarakat. Mari kita jaga perairan sungai untuk meminimalisir pencemaran. Mari kita dukung restocking ikan untuk meningkatkan stok ikan di perairan. Bersama-sama, kita bisa jaga perairan sungai untuk Indonesia. Oke. Okay. Thank you, the committee. That's that's the video that we would like to discuss from now. So we will ask five participants voluntarily uh, to maybe to share their knowledge or their experience regarding the aquatic management in their neighborhoods. So I mean. Uh, I would like, or we would like to know or to hear your um, your thoughts or your opinion 
about your surrounding environments, especially the uh, both freshwater or marine aquatic ecosystems. So anyone who want to start first? Anyone? Arisa, maybe you can choose from the chat room or from the participant list. I think it's better if uh, one country can uh, send one participant yeah. to give opinion or knowledge about uh, uh, the uh, condition and also uh, freshwater management in order to make a health uh, ecosystem like this. I think some simple just experience uh, near your home or surrounding area in your country, your country like that. I, I saw Mr. Shafiq Ayman from Malaysia open the mic. Would you please uh, to share? Yes, because, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, because um, before I want, to, I want to ask, which is uh, I need to explain about uh, the conditions around my, <laughs> around my country, uh, right? Excuse me, yeah. Mr. Shafiq. Uh, yeah. you please turn on your feet. Oh, yeah, I I think already. I think already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because because what I know, uh, well, no. Uh, what happened around my surrounding is, or well, I can the the significance, uh, into in the aquatic environment that I can see is the river, because in Malaysia, especially around my uh, the place that I am living, I can see, uh, most of what happened is the rubbish that being thrown into the water uh, right now uh, what, the, what, the, what the local government has uh, put an effort is like they put like a garbage trap where they put at, at, at the along the river they will see that if they are rubbish they will trap at a certain place and then the, uh, some of the workers will will throw away but still there are no F, uh, like management or uh, properly management that um, so I can see like to clean uh to purify the water. There are one case uh before this like a few years ago in Malacca River. Malacca is like is a state like in the southern part of Malaysia, where they are using the Malacca River for tourism. So they clean it like they they clean the river from a very polluted river to a class one river. The class one is a very clean one. Okay, in order for the for the marines, I don't see much, but uh, I didn't I didn't really see any differences between the freshwater, but the most the but the, the significant thing that I, that I always see is also the rubbish, also the rubbish which is uh being thrown by the maybe tourists from like the rubbical, the unused net from the fishermen. Uh, that, that's it, but. What I can see, um, but the good thing what in Malaysia that I can see now, people are more aware of that, and they have tendency to create an event like the bleach clean up. Uh, so where they will collect the rubbish, they will wait, uh, this sort it accordingly to the type, and they sell it like uh for for money, which in turn is a good action also. That's all I think I can say. Uh, oh, another one is the innovation that I, if I'm not mistaken, is being um, implemented by the Selangor, Selangor government where they create like a tool, if I can say a tool where they collect the the, the garbage from the river, what uh, like a boat, but uh, that boat functioning to collect the, river, uh, the rubbish from the river. They collect in, in a basket and then throw it away. That's how the management in Malaysia I can see. That's all I think I can share. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shafiq Ayman. Uh, um, that's that's I mean it's a little bit similar what happened here, right? Uh, yes. Paiko? Yes. I mean, um, we have faced on the same challenges in order yeah. to make uh, our aquatic uh, ecosystem is better and healthy like this but i not uh, once uh, one uh, words or sentences uh, community participation is important like 
Mr. Yes. Yeah, it's important. So if we manage uh, fresh water or others ecosystem, uh, participation of the community is uh, necessary. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Safik Aiman. Uh, I, I think it's questions. experience. Uh, I have a short question for for Mr. Safik Aiman. Do you? Yes. Uh, do you have? I mean, uh, your is your government has strong punishment for the person who throw the rubbish away from uh, the river? Punishment. From what I see, they they are stated the fines, but they not really implemented it. <laughs> they not really implemented it. They just like stating, yeah, okay, if you are throw this away, uh, through the rubbish, yeah, they will find like one thousand or one hundred thousand. But I just can see the sign, not the, not the implementation by the officers or the government. They are not really really putting it into it. Okay, thank you again. Welcome. Um, now we Teresa, have, uh, we have yes. one uh, opinion in the chat room. Maybe right. you, you can read. For us. Okay. Please allow me to read the opinion from Miss Sabrina. Uh, wait a second, please. I will expand the view. Yes. Um, she came from Kediri, Indonesia. She said that the aquatic environment has currently been declining due to pollution and sand mining. Oh, sand mining. Uh, but the local government is now trying to restock several species like Japanese barb and Ucheng. What is Ucheng? I don't know. Um, so, Jumanto, maybe. Mr. Jumanto can explain <laughs> about this fish. Jumanto <laughs> Sensei, could you please explain what Ucheng is? Memasilus fasciatus. In scientific name, ah, it's like a freshwater fish or freshwater fish uh, in the freshwater. yes. Uh, sorry, sorry, just part of it was. Uh, we ah, uh, we need your explanation about ucheng. And ucheng, oh, ucheng, yeah. ucheng. <laughs> yeah, not ucheng, okay, ucheng, ucheng, ucheng. Uh, what, the what, habitat what, uh, requirement uh, and also the uh, common name. Mm. Latin name sudah Ucheng. Mm. Yeah. Is this species? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this species need the habitat mostly. Uh, where, um, uh, that's I found in the uh, Oya River. Opa Oya, Opa Oyo, Oya, Oya River. This starting from the upper uh area it's mean that the uh, from pakem then from cangkringan until a little bit lower prambanan so from the upper until the middle of the river it's mean that this this habitat is uh has clean water yeah, clean water high oxygen then um high uh what means uh running uh, flowing, okay, flowing waters, it. flowing waters, and mostly the deep only around uh, less than a meter. But also in Pongo, uh, in Pongo, that the uh, source of water, the deep around six meter, that they also uh, found this species. Yeah, so this species actually uh, can stay uh, in the deep or in the shallow area, but the they need the flowing water system this is and if uh what's mean that uh to spawn the species yeah uh in the um uh for the for the fisher not fisherman it's mean that for the culture cultureman uh, fish, uh, fish aquaculturist this fish can be spawned using uh like uh whole uh, when that making from bamboos or others to uh this species uh this fish is to hit yeah uh and that's whole um and this actually um very easy to breed yeah very easy to breed and but this is very tricky because uh need to be uh take care uh carefully take carefully this 
this uh when my um uh, found that's my uh, opinion and of my research. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Jumanto. Uh, we note uh, several that uh, if we found Uchang, that means the water mm -hmm. still in the clean water, uh, high, not, high uh, oxygen like this. And this uh, yeah. the habitat requirement from for Uchang. Okay, Dr. Reza, I think we have participants from Vietnam. Maybe they have a different opinion. Maybe we yes, can, we, uh, we, we need, uh, uh, I don't know, her or his opinion. Any participant from Vietnam? Would you like to share your opinion about uh, challenges and management strategy uh, in your country regarding uh, freshwater uh, ecosystem? Okay, Pariza, maybe other participant. Okay. Is there anybody who want to share knowledge, experience, comments about their surrounding environments? Of course, related to the freshwater and aquatic, uh, freshwater and marine uh, environments. Anyone? Okay, please allow me to ask an opinion from probably from uh, from Mr. Hong Pono Girmain. Is it correct? Hello, Mr. Hong Pono. Hello. Yeah. Do you mind if you share your opinions, your experience regarding the management of aquatic environments in your country or in your regions, in your neighborhood? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm from Benin, West Africa. And uh, excuse uh, me, sir. Is it possible to turn on your camera? Of course. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi you nice to meet you. Yeah, it's better. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me. Where are you from again? Where are you from? I'm again? from Africa. Benin. I'm from Benin. Okay, Benin okay. is a small country. Uh, it's central West Africa, near to wow. Nigeria. Uh, oh, no, our, official wow. language, uh, our official yeah. language is French. Yes, so uh, the, I'm sorry if uh, sometime my English is not the uh, best. Uh, just, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's not a big deal. Okay. Just pay yeah. attention for mm -hmm. keywords. Okay. Because I'm not no native uh, English speaker, uh, but according to your uh, aquatic, but uh, I want I would like to to press to to add precision. Uh, currently, I'm graduate student at Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology, so I'm studying uh, marine life science. Okay. Mm. Uh, in Benin, we have uh, uh, most of uh, uh, fishery fishery activities uh, are related to freshwater. Uh, we have sea, we have sea at the ocean Atlantic, but uh, most uh, activity because. Uh, uh, to to make uh, a aquaculture in sea we don't have experience in aqua in sea aquaculture so may farmer farmer uh, 
have a good experience in freshwater aquaculture, uh, especially uh, tilapia and uh, claria species. And uh, we've uh, JICA projects. Uh, uh, we teach farmers how to uh, how to conduct uh, a good practice uh, to get uh, good practice for aquaculture uh, on these species, the tilapia and uh, and uh, clarias. But according to fishing in natural uh, environment, especially sea or sea water, uh, inland water. So oh, the signal is lost. Okay. Yeah. Fisherman. We have many fishermen who exploit hmm. Hello, Mr. Hampano. Yeah, I think we will wait That's... or we continue, Michael. Okay, I think we will continue to other participants that maybe will give uh, opinions. Maybe last participant, yes, there is a... maybe. Okay, it's from, from Miss Indrian Riska Amelia. I think she should talk by herself, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Miss Indrian. Uh, is it possible? Hello. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, would you please share your knowledge or opinion or experience directly? To I'm sorry, audience? may I stop or continue? Uh, continue. Oh, it. hey. Yes. Please yes, please continue. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry, Miss Antian. So uh, we have many challenge, challenges about uh, fishing management, uh, according to pollution, uh, according to uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, exp exploitation of uh, fish resources, because we have many fishermen and uh, we don't have enough fish, we don't have enough fish and Many fishermen uh, uh, use uh, bad practice, bad practice such as uh, fishing gear because uh, they need to catch more fish, but not in sustainable manner. So uh, we, 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 to face this challenge, uh, we try to develop aquaculture, to develop aquaculture and, uh, and uh, teach fishermen how to, to, to develop fish aquaculture in fresh waters. And uh, I think I can have opportunity. I try to prepare uh, some PowerPoint about fishing Fishing, uh, fishing sector in Benin. And uh, if I have opportunity, I can share to participants. And in this manner, uh, we can know more deep information uh, on fishery sector in Benin. And I can get uh, more information more knowledge to how to succeed our 
uh, our fishery management and uh, how to give a solution when I will back, uh, uh, go back to, to Benin after studying in Japan and after a, a participate to this summer course. Uh, I would like to stop my my in, in, my opinion in this stage, and uh, I, I can get uh, other uh, opportunity to talk more. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, uh, so you live. You are now. Uh, you now live in in Tokyo, right? Hi, hi, hi. hi. Ah, hi, hi. Uh, hi. Which 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 campus? Bongyo? Tokyo. Ah, uh, Tokyo University of Science and Technology, Chinagawa. Ah, yeah, yeah. I know that campus. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Tokyo. 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 Hi, hi. Welcome. Hi, hi. Tokyo. 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 <laughs> so uh, it's Japanese that. class now. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Hong Pono, thanks Hi. again for your uh, comments, uh, your knowledge sharing. And I think there will be a session for each participant to share uh, their uh, knowledge. I think if I'm if if I'm not wrong, um, but sure, we would like to hear your 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 uh, experiences or to see your ppt in in another opportunity unfortunately not today i'm so sorry thank but you. we have time constraint okay thank you good, yeah good luck yeah, for your studies yeah yeah hi hi do it as much day and then uh, pa Iman yes. raise hand. Uh, before that i think we already has okay. um comments from Miss Indrian Riska Amelia. She said that her office have, have settled a shrimp ponds and, and the waste management, waste water management, uh, I mean, equipped with the seaweed planting. And once they have restocked, once they have tried to restock the tilapia, and the program unfortunately failed due to <laughs> due to the fishes or the fishes caught by uh, local people. Um, do you have any information about this? I mean, uh, uh, so maybe it's 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 classified. Do you have any comments, Pak Eko? How to uh, solve or how to deal with this I kind of situation? <laughs> educational for local community is important <laughs> right. because they uh, caught uh, yeah. this fish uh, for consumption in the in this program like that <laughs> yes during the program this is. <laughs> and maybe it's not only education but particip participation by local people is also pivotal so they can feel the benefit the benefits so they can uh yeah they also can uh resist. they they also can if they they involve they can also be responsible for that program in in my opinion so i think the last one pak eko yeah from mr iman sudrajat please go ahead pak iman okay thank you for your thanks uh first of all uh, i will apologize because my english May is not plenty. Okay. In two thousand, oh, you're good. 80, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> In two thousand eighty, we did eel enlargement. We cut glass eel in several river mouth in North Sulawesi to Gorontalo. In this every month, uh, in dark moon. But lastly, in two thousand. Uh, 16, the number of glass eel catches has been greatly reduced and is only found in certain estuaries. It turned out that there was an increase in human activities 
in several upstream uh, such as companies, dam, uh, or destructive farming and fishing. In my opinion, glass eel are able to detect the polluted estuaries, I think. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Iman. Uh, I, I, I would like to ask you further questions. Uh, with uh, which city that you meant? Uh, in North Sulawesi, Manado and Gorontalo. Oh, Manado. Manado yeah. and Gorontalo. Yeah. Okay. In, I used to. Okay. Used to, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Pak Eko, do you have any comments? Eh, maybe that? this is uh, we going to the closing uh, statement like this. It's okay, Pro Pak Riza. I, yeah, I have sure. several remarks from this discussion. Uh, I think uh, every country uh, face on different, uh, 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 different challenges on aquatic, uh, especially in freshwater aquatic, uh, such as uh, rabies, destructive fishing, as mentioned by Pak Hong Bono, but I think in other region also did like this. And then uh, uh, mining, uh, sand mining and so on. So that's impacting on the water quality, uh, water movement and biodiversity. Uh, so I think it's uh, very important to do the best in order to manage our freshwater ecosystem. And the most important is uh, involve the community or local people are, uh, is uh, necessary for the successful of this program. Maybe like this. Uh, okay, Thank Dr. you, Michael. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm agree with you. So I think. Uh, that's the highlight and uh, thank you again thank you so much again for all of the sharing all of the comments and and we really appreciate that and uh, hopefully i hope i myself hope that we can meet directly we meet we can meet each other in the near future so uh, we just close it now or we have to handle this to the uh, moderator Maybe. or Maybe we can. No committee. Uh, should we just close it directly, or is there any additional announcement? Okay, maybe we can close this uh, session. Okay. Uh, thank you again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I hope today's lecture today's discussion would be very beneficial for you and for us and hopefully we can see you again in next week stay healthy stay strong and see you next week bye bye thank you everyone right thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you, thank you.